Here's a sweet science mancy from the archives. 100 years ago and 150 years ago on soil and on the sociability of cats. Two different entries. But it just speaks to the, the beauty of nature and how we've always enjoyed it. So this is from 1923, uh, a nature article from 100 years ago. The number of organisms in one single gram of soil, no more than a teaspoonful, often well exceeds 40 million organisms. This looks big, but it is difficult to form an idea of that immensity. If each unit in the whole array could be magnified up to the size of a man, and the whole caused to march past in single file, they would go on in a steady stream every hour of the day and night for a year, a month, and a day before they had all passed. We must think then of the apparently lifeless soil which we tread beneath our feet as really throbbing with life changing daily and hourly in, in obedience to some great laws which we, we have not yet discovered, pulsating with birth, death, decay, and new birth. Um, and we must study this more and more, but even if this never happened, and the work, this work would still be justified because it shows to the country person something of the abounding interest of their daily task and of the infinite wonder of the soil on which they spend their lives. That's a cool one. Imagine all the soap operas that happen in each single spoonful of soil. Um, and then from 150 years ago, for you cat people, I have a cat. I'm not a cat person, but, you know, they're fascinating. They were the great thing about cats is they're resistant to evolution. You can't breed cats like you can dogs. We have this huge, you know, chihuahua to St. Bernard thing because dogs, you can just make them breed. You cannot force cats to breed. So it's pretty hard to, to, speech, to uh, make different breeds of them like you do with uh, dogs. Cats are just too fucking stubborn. So, uh, but, but great. So this entry from 150 years ago. It may prove of interest to naturalists to record the following curious instance of the social habits of cats. I once had two she-cats that were upon very intimate terms with each other, always together, and never appearing to have quarreled. At one time, one of them being about to add an increase to their number, being pregnant, the other very kindly nursed it, and even performed the function of a midwife, and actually attended to the necessary offices that are in ordinary cases attended to by the parent. I carefully watch my pets and can therefore vouch for the truthfulness of this extraordinary manifestation of feline sociability.